is um, the connection of my emotions with my intellect. In other words, when we say aware, there's a subconscious part of our brain. I yes. say that there's two yous, I right? I totally agree. There's a conscious part of your brain that's the 100%. thinking you, and then there's the subconscious yep. that you don't know. Yep. And by being able to bring those two things to, and make the connection between them, so if you feel something and it's coming up and you start to articulate it, then you're connecting it with its intellect. If it triangulates, in other words, if yep. the underlying psychology yep. emotion is in sync with your intellect, then you move forward. What's helped me a lot personally is meditation, transcendental meditation. When did I, that start happening? I, in 1969. Okay, so, okay, a long time ago. Yeah, January, uh, by the way, real quick, fun fact, January 12th, 1969 is the greatest day in American history. Do you know okay, why, right? No. It was the day the New York Jets won the Super Bowl. <laughs> Just a little fun fact for everybody watching at home. So 1969. 1969, uh, Beatles were I know where you're going. They came back. I have a funny the, feeling of how you stumbled into um, meditation. I, anyway, yeah. I stumbled into meditation. <laughs> And probably with that funny feeling. Yeah, yeah. but it, it's really interesting. And, and you started and, and continued your whole career? I've like always met it, that, and it's changed my life. Can you tell me how often? What is the pattern within Well, it? typically twice a day, 20 minutes each time. And let me Inside, describe it. Yeah, I want, to, I want to hear you describe yeah. it. Yeah, and I want to go slow because I want to make it clear. That what happens is by, it's a very simple exercise that re, you repeat your mantra over and over again. That's a word that doesn't mean anything. And what it does is it takes you into your subconscious mind. You're not conscious. You're not unconscious. You're in your subconscious mind. It's a peacefulness. And in your subconscious mind, that's the part we're talking about is the second you. Okay? It, the, it makes a connection between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. And so it, um, it, that's where your creativity comes from. In other words, if you want to take a... If you want creativity, it's not like you muscle it in your conscious mind. It's like take a hot shower and the ideas come to you and you grab the ideas. They come up from your subconscious mind. And that connection also creates your creativity. So because creativity comes from there. So it gives you an equanimity. In other words, it's like a ninja. You can sit back, things come at you, and everything seems sl slower, more in control. And you're in constant in control. So that I equanimity. I, I, I apologize, but yeah. I have to. I'm just impatient. Go ahead. Can somebody be in that state constantly? No. Okay. You go into it and you come out of it, but you can feel the difference. In other words, I walk around knowing that um, when I feel one way and it's different from the other, and and I can then say, okay, I want to go into the other. Because that gives me the equanimity, and that equanimity and that creativity is power. Can you go into it without the mantra 20-minute play? I can almost slip into a kind of, ah, uh, it feels that way, so I can carry something with me, but I'm not going into the same depth as that meditation. I see. Because, so, because that part resonates with me tremendously. Um, so it's interesting to see. So I think I can slip into that kind of zone quite a bit, and I actually try to stay in that zone at all times. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think through pattern recognition and this conversation, it's how the things slow down. But it's interesting to hear you say deeper. Uh -huh. Have you tried meditating? Not much, no. Uh, okay, we'll talk about this at, at some point. I'm sure. I would urge you, Yes. okay? Because you're a little bit like me. I think you're a little hyper, right? Yes. Okay, I'm hyper. Yes. I've got a, I don't know whether it's ADD or whatever I it is, it. but anyway, I'm, I'm, the ideas are all I going through. <laughs> All of a sudden, then, when you can then go into this world yes. and so on, it's unbelievable because it gives you that control over your mind. I'm like, I'll tell you, you but for every human but being. But it's interesting, I apologize because I want to share this. Yeah. But I feel massively controlled in the chaos and speed. Okay. I'll I, tell get, you, I get more here, unco uncomfortable in the peace. Let me yeah. give you an example. I want music glaring at all times. Like, I'm uncomfortable in quiet. Uh -huh. That's your problem. Okay, I believe you. I believe you. That's your problem. Um, because you're not letting that, you're not going into that subconscious mind. You're highly conscious. You know, when you sit down you're in there, you're going to be in a position where you're going to get restless because I know it happened to me. I love stuff. I love stimulation yes. and so on. But when you go into this other experience that you don't know what it's like yet, you're going to find that all of a sudden you're going to 
um, get antsy, and that's signs that you're not in control. I understand. You're in a world of nothing. Uh, you're in a world of a lot of stuff. I understand. When you go into the void, yes. Ooh, it's something else. Okay, and that means you'll gain control. I understand. You don't have control of your mind. I understand. One doesn't have control of one's mind if one can't do that.